Welcome everyone to Elm Street Congregational Church, United Church of Christ. I'm so glad you have chosen to join us today as we worship the Lord together and have fellowship. The house of God is such a special place to be. You may have heard people refer to a church congregation as the body of Christ. This is because the Bible explains that we are, each individual, a part of one whole body, the body of Christ. For those of you watching our service on Facebook, welcome. We're so glad you have joined us. Please sign in on the comment section, and if you have a prayer request or need to contact us, let us know there as well. We don't seem to have any visitors this morning, but welcome to all of you who have come to service this morning. Uh, I have a few announcements to make. The Lunch Bunch will be meeting at noon on Thursday, I believe. Um, where are they going? Do you know where they're going to? Cracker Barrel. Cracker Barrel. Okay, Thursday, noontime at Cracker Barrel. And everyone is welcome to join the Lunch Bunch. Gateway Players Theater uh, will be presenting Schoolhouse Rock Live Junior, which is a youth production. And our opening night is going to be this Friday, May 13th at 7.30. So if you would like to attend, um, it's also 13th and 14th, which is Friday and Saturday this week, and then next week, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And if you'd like to attend, you can see me. I can get you fixed up with tickets for this wonderful show. We're continuing to receive donations for Pastor Chris as he moves forward in his education. So if you would like to um, write out a check or leave some money for this um, endeavor, you can do that. Our mission of the month is um, blankets, which you can see displayed up here. And the blankets are part of the Church World Service uh, initiative. And there are flyers which explains what the blankets are and do, etc. On May 15th, which is next Sunday, Women's Fellowship is hosting a um, fun event here in Fellowship Hall. It is going to be painting with Simone, and everyone is invited if you would like to attend. Um, there is a $10 cost to attend this um, event. It's at 2 o'clock on Sunday. We have six spots which are still open, so if you're interested, see Sue Chaplin, um, and she can fix you up with, with your spot. The worship team has been meeting um, on a regular basis and going along with Pastor Kathy's um, talk to us about various disciples of um, contemporary disciples, we've decided that we would like to do something for the disciples of Elm Street Church, which is all of you. So we will be taking pictures and uh, of, of you, our disciples, and putting them, posting them in the vestry for the time being and if you are here today and are willing i'll be taking some pictures are there any other announcements that i'm missing today sue is doing hearts sue and audrey okay so in, also in the vestry this morning, there are some wooden hearts, which we have used for other things that you are welcome to decorate, um, write a prayer on, um, dedicate it to a woman um, that, that has been a part of your life. And you can see Sue or Audrey in the back during coffee hour to decorate those. And lastly, happy Mother's Day. Yay. Yay. Oh, I like your shirt. Mom, the real MVP. There we go. <laughs> All right, so let us get our hearts and minds in the service of Christ by listening to our prelude this morning.
please join me in our call to worship. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is indeed Blessing and honor are yours. O God, glory to God forever. Alleluia. Divine Mother, you formed us in your womb and birthed us as a people. You made us male and female in your likeness. Your love for us transcends all labels and categories. Come among us today, guide us as a shepherd, nurture us as a farmer, weed out the things that prevent us from loving you, our neighbors and ourselves, and let us rejoice in you. Amen. And our opening hymn this morning will be in the green hymnals, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. And please stand if you're able. version. Whew. That was. That was. <laughs> Trying to keep up with that. Okay, okay. And then having to hurry up and get to the end because I am too slow. No pauses, no pauses. Nope. So take a breath. Um, we're going to continue with our saints, our witnesses of the cross, the disciples that are contemporary with us today. Um, we have done William uh, Barber and I have a picture of him to put out there and Today we're doing a Desmond Tutu. This is as big as we can make it. So he has recently passed away. But he is the Archbishop of the Anglican Church in South Africa. And the reason he is considered uh, to be important is because, I don't know if you guys remember, but there used to be this thing called apartheid. Apartheid? Better? All right. This thing called apartheid. And it was severe uh, structural racism. That the rules were so strict that not only could white and black people not be married, but they couldn't have any kind of relationships at all that were intimate. Their uh, black populations, which were the majority, had to live in smaller and smaller areas. And the minority white populations, which were the Dutch settlers that came and settled South Africa, skewed the laws to favor them. Well, that's what happens, right? The people in charge skew the laws to favor them. And this caused years 
decades of uh, power, abuse of power, of um, inhumane practices, and um, trouble between the two groups. Now, so in comes Desmond Tutu, who is, who is there, uh, born there, and he preaches a reconciliation. And then reconciliation is for people to come together, admit what they have done wrong, and then pledge to do better and figure out how to do better. And this was called the um, something commission. Oh, I have it written down, but of course I didn't bring that with me. Um, and, and what it did was it would bring the people who had been hurt and the people who had done the hurting together, and they would talk to each other and, and, and forgive each other for their part in this. Now, not everybody who participated in this forgiving were actually perpetrators. Some people felt that they needed to just be part of the healing process. So in, he won a Nobel Peace Prize for this, and he really showed the world what reconciliation looks like, what kind of atonement reconciliation is. So we've already talked that there's different kinds of atonement. Well, you can't love your brother or your sister, or you can't love God, and you can't love yourself unless you're willing to own up to who you really are and what you've really done and what privileges have worked for you. Even if you didn't set the privileges in place, and you shouldn't necessarily feel guilty about that, but you do need to recognize that. And that was very hard in South Africa because their racism was very institutional. So they also had personal racism because you can't get away from that if you have institutional racism. So he is our disciple of Christ for this Sunday. His name is Desmond Tutu. He is an archbishop and, Nobel of the Pre and winner of the Nobel Peace Prize, and he promotes reconciliation between peoples who have hurt each other. Thank you. Our call to confession. God is present to guide our journey and eager to forgive us when we go astray. Therefore, in humility and faith, let us confess our sins against God and neighbor. Please join me. Holy God, we confess that we have strayed from your paths of right relationships and peace, and we have dishonored you, ourselves, and your creation. We repent of these hurtful ways. Forgive us, we pray, as we learn to forgive others and guide our feet into the way of peace. Amen. Brothers and sisters and siblings in Christ, God's mercy overflows as a healing spring to cleanse us of our defenses. Therefore, know that you are forgiven and receive the new life in Christ. And our invitation to offering, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Trusting in divine care, let us present our tithes and offerings to God, who restores our lives eternally.
dedication, let's say that together. Holy God, Holy God divine, divine shepherd, shepherd, you anoint us with the oil of gladness. Your love overflows our hearts. Accept our offering for the good of the world as we joyfully give thanks for our life in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Our scripture reading this morning is Acts chapter 9, verses 36 through 43. In Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha. In Greek, her name is Dorcas. She was always doing good and helping the poor. About that time, she became sick and died, and her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room. Lita was near Joppa, so when the disciples heard that Peter was in Lita, they sent two men to him and urged him, please come at once. Peter went with them, and when he arrived, he was taking taken upstairs to the room. All the wood widows stood around him, crying and showing the robes and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was still with them. Peter sent them all out of the room. Then he got down on his knees and prayed. Turning toward the dead woman, he said, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. Then he called for the believers, especially the widows, and presented her to them alive. This became known all over Joppa, and many people believed in the Lord. Peter stayed in Joppa for some time with a tanner named Simon. Shepherd of souls, you call us to an abundant feast at the table of your word. Open our hearts to feed on your goodness, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we might dwell ever more deeply in you. Amen. Now you do not have to rise for the singing of this hymn. Uh, it is Blessed Be the Tide That Binds in the Green Hymnal, number 286.
two of those songs down. Well, siblings in Christ, the Elm Street family, I am so glad that you are here today and know that if you are here, it's because God called you this morning and you answered that call. We know that God commands us to love one another. We know that God commands us to love God, God's self, and that God commands us to love our neighbors and ourselves. And just in case we didn't figure it out, he commands us to love our, neighbor, our, our enemies too. And it's this love and how this love works out together that makes us a community of Christ disciples. When we look at today's text, Tabitha, a.k.a. Dorcas, is a woman in Joppa who is actually called a disciple. She is one of, she is the only woman where the Greek word mathateus is used in the feminine form. And she um, does good works. She makes clothes for the poor. And she leads by example. And when she dies, there's just great mourning and the community is so affected by her death that they send for Peter. Now they have no idea what Peter's going to do, right? But they send for Peter and Peter comes in and he prays and she comes back to life. Now she certainly isn't Jesus and she certainly is not a resurrection. This is that she comes back to life and eventually she will die like any other human and she will be part of the kingdom, the family of God, just in death as she was in life. So people often wondered, well, what, what is this story really about? And one of the things that scholars believe is that this is a story about community and about those in the community that are connectors. Those in the community that have authenticity and gentle spirits and who respond to God's love. And this is what Tabitha Dorcas did. She responded to God's love in making clothes for the poor. Now, that sounds nice, but when you realize what that really entails, is it entails most likely the spinning and weaving and then making it out of whole cloth. Because in those days, they didn't cut cloth. They wove a piece, and that piece is what you use then for clothing. And they used all kinds of ways to clip it together. And um, we often see them in like robes that have sleeves, like my my robe, but probably not yet. That's probably not till the Middle Ages, or at least the 500s. Because cloth had to be woven in such a way that you could cut it and sew it. So that being said, to make clothes for people was a big deal. It took an awful lot. And the women who were with her came out and they showed Peter, the clothing that she had made for the poor. And maybe they were trying to say, see how worthy she is of your prayers. But what they didn't know is that everyone is worthy of prayers. But since she was this connector, this disciple of Christ, God did do a miracle. He raised her from the dead through Peter. And then through that miracle, that sign and wonder, more people were brought to Christ. So that everything that the apostle does, everything that disciples do, should lead to Christ. And when we look at that this morning, this leading to Christ, we, um, we really run afoul of our culture. 
Because in leading people to Christ, we do it as a group. It's not me, it's not you, it's all of us together. And it's how well we show our love for not just strangers, because sometimes it's easier to love strangers than it is to love the people you know. So one of the harder things for us to do is to love one another. But that is a commandment, so we have to figure out how to do that. Now, the community The community prayed together, they cried together, they were vulnerable together, which is antithetical to what the world says, right? Our world says, tough it out, suck it up. You're on your own. It's rugged individualism. Take care of yourself. Don't expect help from anybody else. If you do, you're weak and will shame you. But that is not what God's kingdom is about. God's kingdom is about being vulnerable with each other and allowing God to use us all to make us all better. If we continue to have the rugged individualist, I can make it on my own, I don't need you attitude, which all of us have to some degree or another, even me, then we prevent God from changing us, from transforming us into better brothers and sisters. That transformation is what allows the kingdom of God to happen here and now. Remember, the kingdom of God is not a post-mortem pie in the sky. The kingdom of God is here and now whenever two or three are gathered together. There Jesus is. Now, our world, a mess, a total mess. And we see how dangerous the call to individualism is. We just experienced for the last two and a half years. There is a call to protect everyone by wearing masks and getting vaccines and keeping a safe distance. And we have a large swath of the population that feels that that infringes on their individual rights, which it does. But where is the care for the community in that? So we're always pulled between the individualism and the vulnerability of community that God sets up for us. There is a, a uh, Presbyterian theologian, author, an essayist, and this is what he writes that pertains to us today. When it comes to putting broken lives back together, when it comes in religious terms to saving souls, the human best tends to be the human best tends to be at odd with the holy best. To do for yourself the best that you have is to uh, grit your teeth and clench your fist in order to survive the world at its harshest and its worst. This is by that very act to be unable to let something be done for you and in you that is more wonderful still. The trouble with stealing yourself against the harshness of reality is that that same steel then prevents your life also from being opened up 
and transformed by the Holy Spirit. Vulnerability. We do not like to show it. I know that there are times when I want to be your strong leader and not show any vulnerability. That is not helpful for me and it is not helpful for you. Because as a disciple of Christ, it is my call to be vulnerable so that you can be vulnerable, so that the Holy Spirit can fill all of our lives and help us to take the love of Christ out of this womb and into our world that sorely needs it. Our world is broken, and we can see that. It's pretty obvious when people who work very hard for very little money can't make ends meet, and people who hardly ever work at all have tons of money and spend it on whatever they want to because they are not tied to a community. We live in a me, mine, and I world, and that is not the world of kingdom living. So we have wonderful news. So the good news is, the good news is, is that God, through Jesus Christ, has given us examples of how to love our, love God, love our neighbor, and love ourselves. That God's love in Jesus Christ is what we have to go on to understand how we are to be in the world and how we are to respond to that love that God gives us. And that response, you see, like Tabitha Dorcas, is a response of giving of making sure others have what they need, of putting yourself in a place where you could be hurt, embarrassed, ridiculed. If you start, if you start, if we started living like Christ, Southbridge would be a totally different place. Think about that. So we are fortunate that our Savior not just lived and died and resurrected, but taught and showed and loved and cared for and gave us the examples of what love is like during his lifetime, which was very short. Let us pray together. Holy God, our Father and our Mother, we thank you for stories like Tabitha Dorcas. We thank you for the wonderful examples that Jesus has given us. And we ask you to hold us in our vulnerability that we might love you, our neighbors, ourselves, and our enemies to build your kingdom here on earth. Amen. All right, joys and concerns. I know Larry sent me a text at your son. So Larry's son needs our prayers. And let's pray for the Lapriaris. They uh, are doing COVID. It's their turn. Um, and what other joys and concerns do we have this morning? Louise, Louise, Louise Walker. I talked to her this week, and and Althea did, and she's she says she's healing. But let's keep her in our prayers. Go ahead. Um, I think this is a, it's a joy for me. Um, I got to spend five days last week with some wonderful mothers and daughters um, on a vacation, and it, it just was restful, relaxing, 
and just a great time to be together as mothers and daughters. That sounds lovely. Thank you for sharing. Go ahead, Greg. Oh my, okay. Fran and Karen. Oh, that is something else that we do have to talk about. We, we need to start a transportation ministry because we have several of our um, elderly members who cannot drive. And so pray about it. And if you feel God is calling you um, to participate in that, please let us know. Okay, let us pray with these joys and concerns. Holy God, who is the mother of us and who is the father of us. The spirit in Hebrew is feminine. And so it is right to call you mother as well as to call you father. We know the examples that you have given us is that God is like a hen who gathers her chicks together, is a feminine um, metaphor. So we know that God is not wrapped up in gender, but we do want to acknowledge that there is feminine aspects to God, and in those feminine aspects, we are a community that is built and nurtured by our mothering natures, whether we are male or female. We know that it is this nature that uh, allows us to be concerned for others in our community. So this morning we pray for Larry's son and for the Lapriaris and Louise Walker and Karen and Fran. And we pray, Lord, that you will be with them and that you will care for them and help them in their state of vulnerability to be well and to grow and to know your love. We want to pray for Steve, who is facing some difficulties right now, and ask that you allow him to learn to know you so that he might choose a better path. And we have joy of time together of mothers with their daughters. And we want to thank you for that precious, precious relationship that mothers and daughters can have. And we call for transportation ministers to help feed our sheep, Lord, as you have said. Amen. So please join me in our intercessory prayer. Um, the part of the congregation is bolded. In this season of Easter rejoicing, let us offer our prayers and thanksgiving, saying, Arisen Christ, open, open our eyes to your mercy in the world. For the goodness of the earth, that it may flourish with flowing waters, verdant pastures, and paths that lead us to protect and care for your creation. O risen Christ, open our eyes to your mercy in the world. For the peace and welfare of the world, that all our tables of work and worship promote the understanding and dignity that transforms enemies into friends. O risen Christ, open our eyes to your mercy in the world. For all who suffer with sickness, need, or danger, 
that all our afflictions and fears are met with healing and the comforting presence of your voice. O risen Christ, open our eyes to your mercy in the world. For the blessings we receive and share that we may live a life of ceaseless praise for the salvation that is ours through you. O risen Christ, open our eyes to the mercy in your world. For the saints in light that you will wipe every tear from their eyes as they dwell with you eternally. O risen Christ, open our eyes to your mercy in the world. Holy God, you are our hope and our strength, our light and our sovereign, our shepherd and our savior. With all the saints in heaven and on earth, we praise your holy name and entrust every care to you. Through Jesus Christ we pray, amen. And please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And our closing hymn today will be in the green hymnals, number 295, Revive Us Again. And please stand if you're able. of righteousness, go forward to follow paths of peace. May goodness and mercy follow you as you serve the risen Lord. And let us do our threefold amen.